students i am ishan trivedi assistant professor civil engineering department welcome you in the video lecture series today we are going to discuss about aspect of zoning topics to be covered in this aspect of zoning are use zoning height zoning and density zoning let us start with the use zoning the main principle of use zoning is to divide the town into different zones these things were discussed in the introduction of town planning and utilizing the eight zone to the right purpose and in correct location with respect to each other and divide the town in a such a manner that we are avoid the encroachment of one zone to another zone the town is divided into various zones these zones are residential zone commercial zone industrial zone civic zone institutional zone and recreational zone if i detail out these zones in terms of percentage in a normal town then it will be determined as for the residential zone the percentage of land which acquire is of 40 percentage to 50 percentage for commercial zone it is 2 percentage to 5 percentage for industrial zone 5 percentage to 20 percentage of land is required for such things for civic zone 2 percent to 3 percentage of land is acquired for institutional zone 1 percentage to 2 percentage land is occupied and at last for recreational zone remaining percentage of land is acquired this bifurcation is tentative it varies with the town its location and development involved for the town plan so this is tentative don't take such things in your consideration these things would vary as i said the zones are classified in various categories let us start with the residential zone it is the zone of town where people live together in large number the character and the location of the zone will depend on the various factors such as nearness to the market freedom from nuisance noise and smoke nearness to the park and playground the houses in these zones are detached semi detached row house flat or skyscrapers it should have a wide strip of green belt surrounding it so that you can maintain the privacy from the other zones and for residential zone there has to be rapid transport facilities so that one can move from their houses to place of work next is commercial zone this zone consists of markets warehouses godowns business offices banks etc this zone should be located near the center of traffic and preferably it should be along the road side as we have seen in our surroundings the entire commercial is located along the road side and such development done along the road side for example cg road or you can say the development along ashram road the development such development is called commercial zone next is industrial zone we need to take great care while determining the location of industrial zone this zone should be planned in the lever direction of a town so that we can avoid the dangerous gas which is easily cross over without disturbing the town and its atmosphere furthermore these industries are classified in various categories first is minor industries these minor industries are of dairy bakery laundry where the group of people are engaged and these are located close to the residential zone and such things are essential for the day to day life then second is light industries light industries includes glass porcelain ice etc 
which use only electric power but not the solid fuels and does not cause any real nuisance third is medium industries medium industries like cotton mills oil mills sugar mill which produce noisy atmosphere and undesirable waste and the last is heavy industries these includes cement steel oil refineries which give out obnoxious gases and fumes this should be located on the outskirts and place lever direction of the town so you need to take care while locating the industries in the town next is civic zone this zone contains all public and semi public building like post office banks civic center offices court public libraries etc and it should be located near to the residential zone next is institutional zone this zone contains school colleges institutional etc and should be located in peaceful surroundings near the residential zone and away from business or industrial zone and the last is recreational zone this zone includes mainly park and playgrounds there are also certain recreational activities or facilities are there such as cinemas theaters town halls clubs libraries and other community needs this is planned in the remaining area of the town so this is what the use zoning now understand the advantages of use zoning each zone permit the right use of land for which it is for reserved the location of industrial zone would be such that it will result in the assisting to bring down the cost of production it enables the proper selection of site for various community needs such as school park playground hospital colleges etc it results into the stabilization of land as you reserve land for right purpose and for right use so the land value can be stabilized it is possible to accurately determine in the advance the required size of transport facilities and other public amenities i am reserving the land for each category so that i can design or i can put more emphasis for transport and other public amenities and such things are designed very effectively then the unnecessary intrusion of facilities and industries on the residential areas is provided and the residential area remain free from the traffic congestion and ultimately you can avoid noise and obnoxious smell so this is what the advantage of use zoning now understand height zoning the main aim of height zoning is controlling the height of the building and give the benefit of the surrounding and the nearness properties from the tall building so based on that there are two main factors first is the cubical content of the building and the second is the width of the street abutting the building and the open space and margin of the building tall building impairs the natural beauty like sun wind cool breeze for the surrounding small houses and thus it makes the small houses unsuitable for the inhabitation there are various methods used to control the height of the building the very first method which is common that is restrict the building height based on the width of the abutting street and this method we have studied it in building by laws that is light plane rule generally 45 degree and 63.5 degree light plane rule are adopted the rule state that that no part of the tall building should be cut the light plane drawn from the boundary of the plot at the angle of 45 degree or 63.5 degree to the horizontal the ratio of height of the building to the width of the street or width of the road 
should be kept should be kept one gem one for 45 degree light plane rule and two gem one for the 63.5 light plane rule here you can see the crossover like i cannot impair the natural things of the opposite building and that's why the ventilation or you can say sunshine has to reach at the bottom part of the opposite building and that's why this has been taken from the surrounding road and its base in the case of 45 degree light plane rule the building height is restricted up to the width of the road means the width of the road and the building height are of same for light plane rule 2 gem 1 the building height is almost double than the width of road here the setback is given for the uppermost part of the building which has been kept further setback apart from the edge of the road or the building so this is what the height zone in most of the town the light plane rule of 63.5 is adopted now understand the advantages of height zone it does not allow the tall building to grow near by the building of lesser height it controls the setback from the road as these things were discussed earlier it establishes minimum standards in terms of light air and space and thereby it creates a healthy condition in the town building with uniform height constructed along the important roads give the pleasing aesthetic appearance on that particular road or you can say on that particular stretch the land value are not allowed to go up very high in favored areas where the concentration is more or the area in the city where you can find most of the activities are going and at that particular area the restriction of height has been made and these things in proper controlled growth so this is what the advantages of height zoning now understand the density zoning the density of population in the residential area is controlled by the means of suitable rules and regulations. You have to understand here that it is not practically possible to restrict the person like you cannot say that certain group of people or certain class of people cannot enter to the town for the activities for earning or for any purposes. So you have to control the town in a strategic manner so that the effective density of the town can be managed and ultimately you can restrict the number of person from occupying any residential unit so certain measures has to be taken for controlling the density zoning these are like adaptation of front side and rear margin from the boundaries which are specified you can also specify the maximum height of the building then minimum size of allotment of houses for individual is also specified the number of houses per unit area is also limited you can construct certain amount of houses in that particular area so that you won't find number of people or higher density in that particular area you will find in your surroundings or in, in your city even that at certain areas you will find number of people and number of houses at the same time there will be certain area where you won't find that much of crowd in that particular area so while determining such things the density of the population has to be homogeneous you cannot say that you will achieve the homogeneous or the population is evenly distributed but you have to try that that each zone have particular amount of population and such effort has to be made the ratio of total site area to the total built up area or you can say floor area is also specified as i talked in building bylaws that the fsi or floor area ratio is for the density you are 
controlling the growth of a town or that particular road or a stretch and that's why i told that that fsi is the parameter of density now furthermore there are two terms first is the gross density and the other is net density let us first understand the gross density it is defined as the average density of population per unit area of the whole residential zone whereas the net density is the average density of the population per unit of the housing area including local roads only and what are the things which are excluded from gross density these are of open space public institution and shopping centers for gross density what i am doing i am doing total population divided by the area of residential zone whereas for net density i am just calculating the area of local roads and the area of house whereas i am neglecting or i am excluding the area of open space public institution and shopping centers now understand certain advantages of density zoning density zoning facilitate the proper layout and designing of various public amenities and the services one can have the benefit of all those essential services which they deserve it ensures the enough light and ventilation to the residents there is absence of overcrowding and at last the land values are stabilized because you are avoiding the unnecessary concentration of population at certain places so that the demand is restricted and this is how these three aspects are very important for the understanding of town plan so thanks for watching this video i am ending this session here i hope you have learned the aspect of zoning and its classification thank you